Good morning. On behalf of all of us assembled here, we would like to welcome all who are visiting with us and to all who are new to our parish family, welcome. If you've not already done so, we ask that all cell phones and any other electronic devices please be silenced at this time. Deacon Jim will be assisting Father Jim, who will lead us in the celebration of the Eucharist. Please stand. We invite everyone to please pick up your songbooks and join in singing our gathering song, number 647, Lord of All Hopefulness, number 647. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this morning. Thank you, friends. In today's gospel, Jesus reaches out to a blind beggar, anoints him, and he sees, believes, and worships. Let us ask for the grace of a deeper faith and more authentic worship. Let us seek pardon and forgiveness for anything that gets in the way of our surrender to God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of mercy, who sent your Son into our world, not to condemn it, but to save it, open our eyes to behold Jesus lifted up on the cross and to see in those outstretched arms your abundant compassion. 
Let the world's weary and wounded come to know that by your gracious gift we are saved and delivered. So immeasurably is the love with which you love our world. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I've chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest, who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Of love in the face of hate. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, was it his sin or his parents' sin that caused him to be born blind? Neither, Jesus answered. It was no sin either of this man or of his parents. Rather, it was to let God's work show forth in him. We must do the deeds of the one who sent me while it is day. The night comes on when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. With that, Jesus spat on the ground made mud with his saliva, and smeared the man's eyes with the mud. Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went off and washed, and came back, able to see. His neighbors and the people who had been accustomed to seeing him begging began to ask, Isn't this the fellow who used to sit and beg? Some were claiming it was he. Others maintained it was not, but someone who looked like him. The man himself said, I'm the one, all right. How were your eyes opened? The man they called Jesus made mud and smeared it on my eyes, telling me to go to Siloam and wash. When I did go and wash, I was able to see. Where is he, they asked. He replied, I have no idea. Next, they took the man who had been born blind to the Pharisees. 
Note that it was on the Sabbath that Jesus had made the mud paste and opened his eyes. The Pharisees, in turn, began to inquire how he had recovered his sight. He put mud on my eyes. I washed it off. Now I can see. This prompted some of the Pharisees to assert, This man cannot be from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others objected. If a man is a sinner, how can he perform signs like these? They were sharply divided over him. Then they addressed the blind man again. Since it was your eyes that he opened, what do you have to say about him? He is a prophet. The religious leaders refused to believe that he had really been born blind and had begun to see, until they summoned the parents of this man who now could see. Is this your son? And if so, do you attest that he was blind at birth? How do you account for the fact that he can now see? His parents answered, We know this is our son, and we know that he was blind at birth. But how he can now see, or who opened his eyes, we have no idea. Ask him. He is old enough to speak for himself. His parents answered in this fashion because they were afraid of the religious leaders who had already agreed among themselves that anyone who acknowledged Jesus as the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been born blind. Give glory to God. First of all, we know this man is a sinner. I would not know whether he is a sinner or not. I know this much. I was blind before. Now I can see. They persisted. Just what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? I have told you once, but you would not listen to me. Why do you want to hear it all over again? Do not tell me you want to become his disciples too. You are the one who is that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we have no idea where this man comes from. Well, this is news. You do not know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not hear sinners, but that if someone is devout and obeys God's will, God listens. It is unheard of that anyone ever gave sight to a person blind from birth. If this man were not from God, he could never have done such a thing. What? You are steeped in sin from your birth, and you are giving us lectures? With that, they threw him out bodily. When Jesus heard of his expulsion, he sought him out and asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? You have seen him, Jesus replied. He is speaking to you now. I do believe, Lord. And the man bowed down to worship him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world to divide it, to make the sightless see and the seeing blind. Some of the Pharisees around him picked this up, saying, You are not counting us in with the blind, are you? To which Jesus replied, If you were blind, there would be no sin in that. But we see, you say, and your sin remains.
Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Samuel's youngest son, David, is to be anointed king. And from the time of his anointing, it is said that the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. Powerful image. It connects well with the way of the Spirit that is a work among us, and especially in those who are preparing to receive the sacraments of initiation, you folks who are here this morning. We rejoice with you, with catechumens and elect, those who are about to receive those sacraments all around the world, but especially in our own parish community, those who will deepen their relationships with Christ in the church, through the sacraments of initiation, baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. No doubt the Spirit of the Lord will rush upon you, just as the Spirit rushes upon each and every one of us in the waters of baptism, in the anointing at our confirmation, and every time that we gather to celebrate the Eucharist. In the Gospel, Jesus uses the gifts of the earth and the gifts of his body to heal the man born blind. Jesus does not have to summon a chorus of angels or some other worldly tools. He simply he spits on the ground. He makes mud with his saliva. He rubs that saliva and dirt together and then touches the man's eyes. Instantly, he's able to see. Like many readings in Lent, this gospel plays with the themes of light and darkness, seeing and blindness. Here Jesus makes clear that it's easier for God to heal physical blindness than willful refusal to see God at work. Most of us, we're honest, we all struggle with some level of spiritual blindness. You know, after all, we do not get to witness these clear and decisive miracles that, of Jesus' time on earth. And so God does not always operate in ways that are easy for us to perceive, but not impossible. The Pharisees, in their obtuse spirit, in their inability to open themselves up to revelation, they choose blindness because having their eyes opened will challenge a system that they comfortably sit in, a system of power and authority over others. And it would challenge that. What God reveals is not always comfortable or easy. We are sometimes called to sacrifice and use our own positions of privilege to advocate for others, even if it's unpopular. But if we want to see, God can heal our spiritual blindness too. And so in these last weeks of Lent, as we approach the beautiful triduum of the Lord's Supper, the passion of the Lord, and his wonderful resurrection from the dead, in these last weeks, we take the opportunity to see more clearly, to understand more deeply, and to experience God's working within us, 
working changes, working miracles, allowing God to love us, forgive us, allowing God to be God for us, and always looking to take away any blindness that hinders that vision of God among us. We once were blind, but now we see. Father Jim and the St. Rose of Lima Parish family, I would like to present to you today our elect, Matthew, Ashley, and Sarah, who are in the final phase of preparation for the sacraments of initiation, baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. Please come forward. Friends, bow your heads as we pray. And I invite this assembly to pray in silence and to ask that our elect will be given a spirit of repentance, a sense of sin, and the true freedom of children of God. Friends, let us all stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified by God, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand. There he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So trusting in God's goodness toward us, we present these needs this morning, knowing that God will answer them in accord with his goodwill toward us. May the church be a beacon to guide others to the light. May our civic leaders strive to walk in the light and lead us to a more just, more peaceful, and more equitable future. May those whose faith has been shaken find reassurance in the grace of God, which is freely given and constantly available. May those preparing for the Easter sacraments realize the richness of God's grace and work to express it in their own good works. May Joan Howell and all those who have died be raised up with Christ and seated in the glory of heaven. May God grant these needs which we hold in our hearts. For these needs, and for George and Mary Yesolitis, Neil Hopkins, and Teresa and Richard McKillop.
Father of mercy, you've led the man born blind to the kingdom of light through the gift of faith in your Son. Free our elect from the false values that surround and blind them. Set them firmly in your truth, children of the light forever. Lord Jesus, you are the true light that enlightens the whole world. Through your spirit of truth, free those who are enslaved by the father of lies. Stir up the desire for good in this elect, whom you have chosen for your sacraments. Let them rejoice in your light, that they may see, and like the man born blind whose sight you restored, let them prove to be staunch and fearless witnesses to the faith. For you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Friends, this community now sends you and our candidates for full communion forth to reflect more deeply on the word of God which we have shared with you this morning. Be assured, all of you, of our loving support and prayers for you. We look forward soon to that day when you will share fully at the Lord's table. So friends, go in peace, and may the Lord remain with you always. We pray for you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Friends, please pray that our sacrifice this morning be acceptable to God, who is almighty. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you, as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led our human family that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted sons and daughters. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with the host of angels join with them in the hymn of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount and source of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his beloved disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his beloved disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout our world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David, our bishop, with the clergy, religious, and all those who you call to belong to the body of Christ. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, with St. Rose, St. David, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Friends, because in Christ we have received the spirit of adoption, as sons and daughters of God, we dare to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus your Christ. For the kingdom and power Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. With you, Mr. Offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
spiritual communion for our brothers and sisters, praying with us from home. My Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most holy sacrament, love you above all things, and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, I embrace you and unite myself wholly.
Friends, let us pray. O God, who enlightens everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before I give the announcements, Janos would like to say a few words. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I would like to invite you to our Tenebris service, which will take place this Wednesday at 8 o'clock right here in the church. And I just wanted to say a couple of things about it, because you always hear, oh, the choir is doing a Tenebris darkness service. That's how they announce it, you know, which probably doesn't mean anything for most of you. This is a beautiful ancient service, actually, of the Catholic Church, and it's the opposite of the Easter vigil, which is called the service of light. This is called the service of darkness. This is when Jesus is going into hiding, basically. And we start with a lit church, and it gets darker and darker, and the end of the service, it's total darkness. We have one candle on the altar lit. And uh, we have some beautiful readings and even m most uh, spectacular music, and the choir is always in the, in the best behavior of themselves, you know, when <laughs> they do this. So, if you really want to hear the choir in their best, you should come this Wednesday at 8 o'clock. And you don't have to do anything. You just come in, sit down, and listen to some great readings and beautiful music and meditate. And I know that God will touch your souls when you come to this service. And if you never came to this, you owe it to yourself. You prepare yourself for Easter with this. Okay? See you Wednesday. Our parish Lenten service, uh, penance service, will be next Saturday at 9.30 in the chapel. Stations of the Cross are held Friday evenings at 7.30. Bilingual Walk of the Cross will be held next Saturday, uh, the 16th of March, at 5.30 p.m. over in the school field. So it's Stations of the Cross we're doing outside. So uh, we encourage you to uh, perhaps take advantage of that. Uh, Altar Rosary is selling religious articles in the chapel after all message, masses. Uh, gifts are on sale at half price, some of them. And the Columbia Club of Freehold will be selling palm crosses after all masses this weekend. I think they're basically in front of the chapel. So uh, if you want a palm cross, we would go there, okay? The Lord be with you. Look upon those who call to you, Lord. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach only the highest good. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Saved by faith and created in Christ for good works, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Closing song is in the back of the hymnal, uh, verse 4.